Hello, in this lesson, I want you to collect and analyze data by conducting simulations of some real life situations. I want you to use data to compare theoretical and experimental probabilities. Some vocabulary going to come across is simulation, probability model, theoretical model, experimental probability, and relative frequency. Let's start here with the first question. It says, Emily is a pitcher on a softball team. Last season, 70% of her pitches were strikes. Design a simulation to estimate the probability that Emily's next pitch is a strike. So rather than going and collecting data, what we're going to do is we're going to use a random integer, or a random number generator, to generate numbers, and we're going to have those correspond with strikes and not strikes. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to create some numbers that would represent strikes. Since we're using percentage and we're using just to the round to the nearest 10, what I'll do is I'll have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Those will be our strikes. And then the ones that are not strikes, that would be 8, 9, and 0. So 70% of our numbers are going to be strikes, and 30% of the numbers are not going to be strikes. That's what we're going to do with our simulation. Then we're going to take a look at example two. We're going to kind of do the same thing here. So a survey of Watertown High School students found that 30% preferred cheese pizza, 30% preferred pepperoni pizza, 20% preferred peppers and onions, and 20% preferred sausage. Design a simulation that can be used to represent that probability that a Watertown High School student prefers each of these choices. Well, we're going to kind of do the same thing here. We have all these nice numbers or percentages running to the nearest 10, so we'll just use the numbers 1 through 10. So we're going to start here, and we're going to start with cheese. And we said we have 30%. Well, that means we're going to have three people. So 1, 2, and 3 are going to be cheese. Then the next are going to be pepperoni, which is also 30%. If I can spell it right, even though it's right in front of me, apparently I can't spell. Or I can't write it at least. Two Ps. There we go. So then we're going to have the numbers 4, 5, and 6 is going to be pepperonis. And then peppers and onions, that is going to be 20%, so that'll be 7 and 8. And then 20% is sausage, so that will be 9 and 0. And there you have it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Emily. We're going to actually conduct a simulation that can be used to simulate the esti to estimate the probability of Emily's next pitch being a strike. Now, the only true way to do this is to use a random number table. I've got a random number table in Schoology for you. So if we go back to Schoology, if I can find it here. I've got too much other stuff opened here. Uh, I don't need that. There's my app store. I don't need that. Desmos, I don't need. Here we go. Here's our school achieve. Okay. So I go back to MT8 LT2. And notice you got this random number list. So if you click on the random number list, we've got just a list of, ran of numbers. And they're randomized. They were actually actually did this physically versus if you use a computer which we'll show you how to do also that's not true random because what happens you're typing in some rule that has it approach random but not necessarily random so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna look at my random number list I'm gonna start any place in the table I want just for this I'm gonna start at the beginning and I'm gonna have the numbers one through seven those are gonna be my strikes so one is a strike, one is a strike, one is a strike, 
six is a strike. And four is a strike. Notice, out of the first five numbers, all of them are strikes, aren't they? So I'm going to put, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to put five strikes. I'm going to do this for every single group of five I have. Then I'm going to go to my next step. So strike, 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 ball. So then we've got four out of five. So in other words, at this point, I've got nine of ten, don't I? Then let's look at our next group. Our next group of five. Seven, five, zero, six, one. So you've got strike, strike, ball, strike. So you've got three out of the five are strikes. So we're going to go three of five, which will be 12 of 15. Let's look at the next group. So I've got three, seven, six, seven, four. So strike, 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 strike. So we've got five out of the five for the next group. Which would be 17 of 20. Let's look at our next group. Notice I go left to right. That's what I'm doing each time. So I go two, six, three, two, zero. So strike, 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 ball. So we've got four out of the five for the next groups. So that would be 21 out of 25. 21. Then I'm going to look at my next group. So I'm going to look at my sixth group here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven, strike, 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 ball, ball. So I've got three strikes. So my next group is three of five, which would be 24 out of 30. Then we'll look at our next group. Strike, ball, strike, strike, strike. So I've got four to five on my next group. So that would be 28 out of 35. Let's take a look at our next group. 20418. So I've got... Strike, ball, strike, strike. So I got three out of five for the next group. So that would be 31 of 40. Getting closer here. Let's do our next group. I got one, nine, two, two, eight. So I've got three strikes again. So three of five which will give me 34 of 45. And then finally, with my last group that I'll use with my table, I'll do 91792. And that is one, two, three strikes again. So I'm going to do 37 of 50. Well, 37 of 50, notice that's 74%. So you're going to have a little leeway here. It's not going to be exactly 70%. In this case, it was a little bit higher with our simulation. Now, can I, I can use technology also. I'll show you how you use technology. Uh, go, to the, go to the Internet. So I'm going to click on the Internet here. And we're going to go to calculator.net. Calculator with just a single calculator. And then what I'm going to do is I want to look at random. So I'm going to search for random under that search bar. This one works out kind of nice. This is, a, this is a pretty nice random number generator. So when I search for that, if it goes, oh, it's a random number generator. It was just below that. What we're going to do is we're going to use the comprehensive version. 
I want to go from 1 to 10. So I'm going to go from 1. And I want to go, whoops, I got a Q in there. I meant to 1. Get out of there. So let me go 1 to 10. Keep on not, not pressing my shift key here, apparently. One to ten. Okay, I want to do 50 numbers. Now, I could do uh, integers or decimals. Let's do, let's do integers. I want to allow duplicates because random means it can be, it can be had. And let's have them going in order, so that's going to make my life a lot easier. So, I'm going to have integers. I'm going to do 50 integers from 1 to 10. I'm going to put them all in order so it's easier to calculate. And then I'm going to click generate. This is how you generate. Now we've got all, we've got this list of 50 numbers. And remember, anything that is a strike is going to be 1 through 7. So actually, if I take a look here, 50 would be my last one. So 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37. Whoops, let's try that again. 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41. So 41 of my 50 are going to be strikes. Well, 41 out of 50, that's even a higher ratio, isn't it? So that would be 84% of my simulations would be strikes.